What is up guys, Andy Forest Team Runner here and today is all about the Seven Bridge Five Mile Night Race. What is up guys, Andy Forrest, the Dean Runner here, joined by Lee. And tonight, as I said in the intro, we are doing the Seven Bridge five mile night race. You can't see a lot, but there's a stunning view out there. And just over there is the new Seven Bridge. This is the old Seven Bridge. And the five mile night race consists of going out across the top of the toll booths and back the other side. It's a race I do every year. Last year, we were plagued with a stitch. Fingers crossed we won't have that issue this year. We'll see. Looking forward to it. Should be a good one, hopefully, should be a fast one. A good rust buster, off the back of the holiday, off the back of the marathon. We'll see how we get on. So there we go guys, that is the Seven Bridge five mile night race done and dusted for another year and I'm delighted to say that we had a successful time this year. We put the demons to bed from last year's race which if you didn't see you can go back on the channel and wa uh, watch last year's race vlog. It was unfortunately played by the stitch issue that I seem to continually have and we did have another stitch last night but I'll go through the details, the comprehensive but albeit short and sweet race overview. Before we do that, a massive thank you to each and every one of you once again for liking, subscribing, sharing, all of that good stuff, following along with my running journey. I appreciate it more than you guys realise. And a massive thank you to everyone out there last night, Rogue Runs, for putting on the event. It's just a phenomenal event that is on my race calendar every year. It's a special thing to run over the Seven Bridge and I appreciate those guys putting on that event just so that we can experience the wonderful thing that is the Seven Bridge at night time, it's pretty wicked. And a massive thank you to Lee and Linda and the kids and the family basically for coming out, filming, supporting. Just makes the race vlog a little bit better than it would have been if it was just me without taking the camera. And Linda in particular, her support was absolutely fantastic. So once again, guys, thank you so much. 
A massive congratulations to Forrester Dean Athletic Club as well. We got the team prize and lots of age category winners last night. Again, some great performances from everyone. It was It's brilliant to be part of a club that is doing so well at the moment. It's great to see a load of Forrester Dean Athletic Club members picking up prizes. And in particular, Marcus taking the win, Lee coming fifth, Myself coming, uh, Lee coming third, sorry, myself coming fifth and Dan coming 11th to scoop that team prize. It really was a great feeling last night. So how did the race go itself? Well, the race was an interesting one. We did suffer with the stitch. I'll go through what I managed to do. I'm kind of starting to, since the Abingdon Marathon, home in on what is actually causing this stitch issue. And it very much is a case of bloating, trapped wind in the stomach area. And I'm getting pockets of wind along the top of the diaphragm, in particular the epicenter is always at the base of the sternum. And it kind of goes along the top of the diaphragm to the left and then to the right as the race progresses. Um, it's something that I still have not managed to find a cure for, but something I'm doing my best to kind of work around and eventually get there. I just seem to bloat on race day. I don't know what it is, but I just fill up with air. I'm assuming anticipation, excitement to race, I don't know, but then unfortunately, I can't pass that air or get rid of it. It gets trapped. I get these really painful pockets of wind. My stomach gurgles. It's it's not nice. But anyway, the gun went off. We sprinted out of the gates. Marcus went off like it just lightning speed. Myself and Lee put the foot put our foot down, and we got out there just to get a good position. And we were floating around. Uh, well, Lee always stayed in third position and kicked on. I kind of dropped back after the first few hundred meters because uh, I knew I couldn't keep up that intensity. And I was floating in a pack with sort of two or three of us, and I was kind of floating in sixth and fifth and fourth and going backwards and forth around there. First mile came and we clocked off 6.06 and I thought to myself at that point, oh that's a bit slower than last year. Uh, I don't know what was going on there, I felt like I was really working hard and I think ultimately that's because I run the marathon, I had a week off, last week I ran 18 miles and this week I haven't done a lot. I'm just having two weeks of nice and easy running before next week we get our heads down and kick on. So I think it was just maybe a bit of sluggishness, maybe a bit too much alcohol over the weekend, I don't know. Uh, but I, you know, I thought that's fine, just roll with it, it is what it is. This is going to be a good rust buster, as I said in the intro. And I just wanted to get out there and race hard and race fast. Get that painful feeling in the lungs, the lungs burning, the legs turning over and feeling good. So anyway, we hit the mile mark, got that 606. We started to peek over the bridge and come down the other side. So at that point, again, exactly the same time as last year. The pain started in my diaphragm, the rib, uh, the stitch. And I thought at this point, even though I clocked a 601 second mile, I thought I just need to ease back a little bit because last year I know I was hitting a 550 down there. Um, and I thought to myself, I just need to be careful here. I don't want this to ruin the race again. It is what it is. I wasn't going to get upset about it. I wasn't going to get frustrated. I'm just kind of living with it at the moment until I can work out what's causing it. So I just kind of eased off just a touch for me to get my breathing under control in through the nose, out through the mouth. Just doing that a fair few times, getting the diaphragm moving properly. And something I did this time, which I haven't normally been doing, is I was literally, literally with my left fist, digging it into the, my rib cage around where these bubbles are moving. And it's such a surreal feeling, because as I dig in, I can feel these pockets of air moving either side uh, of my fist where I was moving it. It was very sore, but interestingly, it kind of worked a little bit. It kind of, not only did it hold it at bay, but it kind of moved some of the bubbles around. And the most painful bubble that I get, as I said, is under the sternum. That one shifted for about a mile after that, which was great. So I kind of was going along, knowing I wasn't going to be able to go 100% at that point, but I just thought, do you know what, just hold the pace, that's fine. Clock the 601, went over the top of the toll booths, around, came up the other side, clocked to 5.51 and thought, now we're cooking. The stitch, it was there, the pain was there, but it was manageable and I was able to start pushing a little bit harder and a little bit harder. And then about mile three and a half, I started to get the sharper pain again. So I thought, sod it, it worked first time, do it again. Dug the fist in. It's really sore there now, right here on the top of the rib cage, uh, base of the rib cage here, digging it in, moving the air bubbles around. Did that for about five, ten seconds. Took some deep breaths, got myself going. The pain, the discomfort was there, but again, the intense pain had gone. I thought, right, just go for it. Just absolutely put the hammer down. See if you can. See if the pain comes back. And touch wood, it didn't come back. The discomfort was always there, but the sharp pains didn't come back. And I was like, clocked to 5.41 uh, on the fourth mile and finished off strong with a 5.31. So I just basically progressed the whole race. And I'm really proud of that because last year, it completely bogged me down. I got really upset, frustrated, gave up too early, mentally switched off this year. I was like, do you know what? It is what it is. I'm getting it all the time. 
Let's just see, until we've got a solution, how we can work around it. And I'm really proud that we push through. I've got to say, comparing my splits to Lee's splits, Lee absolutely nailed it on mile four and five, clocking low 520s. And that's where he put such distance between myself and him. For me, I could see Lee until about three, three and a half miles, which is about peaking on the other side of the bridge. And after that, he was gone. I couldn't even see him. It was insane. So that's a kudos to kudos to Lee and as I said Marcus and Dan for getting that team prize and everyone else and that's pretty much how the race went I'm delighted overall it's a PB it's progress and that's all we look to do is just to be patient to keep the consistency and to progress in the right direction and that's all I can encourage you to do results don't come straight away results take time with running you guys all know patience is the hardest thing for a runner but the only way to get better is to be patient I'm sure you've all heard that saying before it's a great saying and it's never a truer word spoken when I cross the line last night I thought right do you know what I had the stitch it was there but that's 21 seconds quicker than a couple of years ago we are making progress that's that's it guys that is my race recap delighted cannot wait to kick off now to the new at nine in a couple of weeks time which is actually two and a half weeks time on Sunday the 17th I think it is that is going to be the next race and I can't wait to kick start proper training again as of next week. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, and of course do consider subscribing to the channel for weekly running content. And as always, I will see you next time. Until then.